and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. It's about three hours from now, the top 10 GOP candidates will be taking the stage in the arena in Cleveland. Probably the most anticipated event there since LeBron James was in the finals. Let's go live now to Cleveland where Karen Travers joins us. Good evening from Cleveland. It is fitting that the Republican primary season kicks off right here. This arena is famous for LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers, but it's also where one of these Republican contenders will accept their party's nomination next summer. And tonight they are making the case to voters why they should be the one on stage in the spotlight at the convention. 10 Republican contenders, one potentially epic showdown. The goal for nine of them, break through and stop one man from dominating the night. They have to figure out a way to get oxygen back in the race, because right now all of that is being consumed by Donald Trump. Oh Donald God, Trump, everybody. the solid front runner, center stage for his first ever political debate. His team lowering expectations. A senior advisor telling ABC News, Trump doesn't prep. Trump has not held back on the trail, going after his opponents with fiery attacks rarely seen this early in campaign seasons. But his strategy tonight... I've been preparing all my life. We have to make our country great again. But some Republicans say it's time to put Trump under scrutiny. And one way to do that, tie him to the Clintons. Trump's team confirming the businessman spoke by phone to former President Bill Clinton about his political future just before jumping into the Republican race. The debate is just two hours, including commercials. That breaks down to just about 10 minutes per candidate. Earlier in the night and getting far less fanfare, a secondary event for the seven candidates who didn't qualify for the main stage. The American people are never going to trust Washington, D.C., and for good reason. Jeb Bush and Scott Walker will be on either side of Donald Trump. A potentially tough spot. They could be getting it from all sides. If the other contenders decide they don't want to put Donald Trump in the spotlight, Bush and Walker could be the candidates they go after next. Reporting live from Cleveland, Karen Travers, ABC News. Back to you. Thank you very much, Karen. Now, we're going to go to Cleveland in just one second. I wanted to give you at home, though, uh, an idea of what we're going to be covering tonight. In addition to some regional issues, we're going to be joined by a terrific panel, including uh, good friends Bill O'Reilly, of course, Dominic and Andrew, and also we'll be joined by Rick Lazio, a former congressman and Senate candidate in New York. He's, I'm sure, going to have some interesting insight for what those candidates uh, are going through um, under the hot lights. But now let's go live to Cleveland once again and bring in a good friend to the program, Republican strategist Richard St. Paul. Richard's also a former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association, and he will be in the audience. So, Richard, um, you know, usually I hate when they ask these questions, but I think tonight it's apropos. Give me the mood there. Um, you know, somebody compared it. It's probably the most anticipated thing in Cleveland since LeBron James uh, uh, unexpectedly got the Cavs to the finals here. Does it have that kind of vibe here tonight, more less so a debate and more so an event? Absolutely. Like, like the main event. Look, I'm, I'm here. I've been in the hotel and I'm around. A lot of Republicans from around the country are coming here as if this is the Republican National Convention, which we all know will be here later next year. They, they don't call it the grand old party for nothing. I mean, people are having a good time and are very excited. Over two to 3,000 people are expected in the arena tonight. Well, you talk about it as an event here, and in many ways, I think the audience is expected to be the largest cable news audience uh, since they've been recording ratings here. They expect that audience really tuning in because they're looking for reality TV less so than a debate. You've spoken today to both the uh, current RNC chairman and the former chairman. First, let's talk about your conversation with Mr. Steele. What did he tell you um, people uh, in Republican higher-ups are expecting will unfold tonight at 9 o'clock? Well, he, he, he really thinks that this is Chris Christie trying to regain his moment as the straight shooter uh, and the honest guy uh, and trying to take on Trump. Uh, but he did caution and say that Christie's got to watch out that Trump doesn't, that that doesn't backfire on Christie. So he sees this as, as Christie's opportunity to rise. You know, it's interesting. Obviously, this event, it's Fox News' baby. Uh, they picked, uh, the, obviously, the moderators. They have picked the rules, the format. They even picked who's going to be on the stage here in many ways. To that end, uh, I know you spoke to Rince Priebus, the current RNC chairman. Do they hope... Do you think down deep, Richard, that Trump gets taken down a peg or two because they think that while this is entertaining, 
he's hurting the party, or do they hope? They say, Jesus, the guy's at over 20-something percent. Let's hope he comes off credible tonight. What do they want in a perfect world to happen to Trump? Well, I, I did have an opportunity to actually current Sherman uh, about uh, Trump, and uh, you know he uh, didn't quite answer the question, and instead uh, received his uh, previous statement was that was that each candidate just uh, needs to go out there and, and be honest and be true to themselves. I uh, didn't want to particularly comment on Trump, and as you know from the controversy, we've, we've heard in the media reports that uh, the RNC chairman has asked Trump to tone it down a little bit. Whether or not that's true or not, uh, I don't know, but uh, again, he, he just said that each candidate should just be true uh, to, to their form and not be a politician or, or political to be truthful yep. about uh, <laughs> how their passion. Well, Richard, you're great at always making predictions after the event always happens, so I'm going to try and make your first guess this time. Tell me who will surprise tonight, and at the end of the night, if Trump still is a headline, will it be for good or for bad reasons for his campaign? I think, I think the surprise comes with Scott Walker. I think you know, he is, he is uh, right now in third place, uh, or actually pretty much close to, to Jeb Bush, but I think you know, we haven't heard a lot from Scott Walker on the national stage. Uh, and I think he's the one that's, uh, to watch tonight. And finally, is this a good or a bad night for Trump, you think? I think this is a great night. This is what Trump, this is the whole reason that Trump strategized the way he did to get the attention to make sure that he was in the top tier. He is center stage right now, and he's got to continue to do what he's, he's been doing, which is talk straight to the people and not be the politician that uh, you know, people are used to seeing. He, as he says, politicians, not, and it's not me saying this, but he says politicians lie, they never get things done, and he's got to bring it back that he can be the, the person that can get things done, that he is the leader for this, for this nation. All right. Well, uh, I'll be looking for you in the audience there tonight, Richard. Um, uh, you got a lucky ticket, and I appreciate a few minutes with you. I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right, folks, we want to get you involved in our conversation, so head over to Facebook and Twitter and sound off. Our question tonight is pretty simple. It's what everybody's asking. Who do you think is going to win and lose the debate? Who comes out the big winner and loser out of Cleveland this evening? All right. When we come back, though, we bring in our panel, strategy session, political panel, including former New York Congressman Rick Lazio and others are going to tell us what to expect tonight, um, where there may be some pitfalls and opportunities for the 10 men on the stage in Cleveland. Stay with us.